it a lot. And so she said, mom, they really need care. They need somebody for that. Some of them just need somebody to help them. Once they get done, they're, they're drained. And they need someone to help them get in, out the chair, you know. So that's just something that I've been thinking about and, and always picking her brain. Um, a lot of dialysis centers all over the place. Isn't that something? <laughs> isn't that something? And you know who's all only people in there, right? Yep. And that's mm-hmm. a shame. We all that's got that. It seems like the whole whole black community is on is diabetics. You know, it's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. Um, but. So, but and so that's where the opportunity is. You know, to get in there. You know, start developing in relationships. And um, seeing, you know, are you are you able to play some type of literature? Come there often. Um, talk to the uh, the owner or the manager, supervisor, and see if you can, you know, put your mm-hmm. put your information in front of some of the people who need it. And right. you know, if there's somebody in there and they say, "Man, I need to," you know, they seem struggling, they can always just say, "Hey, take a uh, we got a good company right here. Take their flyers right over here on the table." You know, take that brochure <laughs> and you call. Mm-hmm. You know, that's always a great opportunity. So I wonder why dialysis centers don't be on here. Like, because you would think that that's would be a top of first. I think it's because they they really just, it's just to me, they just popped up. I mean, I've just really started really noticing that there's so many of them. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like they're like a Wawa. I don't know if y'all have a Wawa there, but yeah, they're every day going to wear. They're oh, everywhere. Wow. It's it's terrible that they're there, and yep. people are in there. But I said I'm going to really focus on that too. But yeah, I need a good, to that's a good structure. that's a good place, and it that's is. what you do when you find your niches. Like you'll find your niches. You'll find mm-hmm. your your thing that works. You know, yeah. Everybody's company looks different. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. going to have strong suits. Everybody's going to do things differently. Everybody's going to have different networks and different people that they connected to who do different things. So your daughter being in that dialysis center is giving you a different perspective that, that mm-hmm. we can't see, you know, because she's right. giving it directly to you and she's in there. So that's your opportunity. And, uh, you know, and you're going to continue to run across that type of uh stuff the more you engage the business and that's why it's important to like <clears throat> do the research constantly mm-hmm. go out and network with other people who are doing the business or just doing business in general um because you do have those opportunities that will come up right and the, and the good thing is is that being a bus driver um I know the route, some of them. Oh wow! And so I can, you know, I won't ask the uh, the the um, caregiver, you know, a car required because I know some of them don't have it here. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. if anything, you know, I'll let them know if if they're you know on a bus route that mm-hmm. I can, you know, something give them some information. So that's a good thing. Yeah, we got care. So we live in a. Um... So like I'm in Maryland and it's pretty much so it's like the majority of Maryland has like strong metro routes. The majority okay. of it. And a lot of our clients are off of those metro routes. I do have a couple of clients that aren't on the route, but mm-hmm. are kind of close where you can get like an Uber for like five minutes and then get oh. to the client house. So mm-hmm. we try, you know, you try to, you know, you want caregivers that can drive. But again, a lot of times, <clears throat> if they don't have like they, if they don't own that car, they can't afford no car. Bro. No, they can't. And that's just what it is. So you mm-hmm. have to, if you want to be in this business, you're gonna have to, you know, bend and kind of fold and you know, yeah, figure because, out you know, what's gonna work. You know? Being in Jersey, the, the the car insurance is is crazy. So oh, I that's why know about I can't. New Jersey. Yes, that's why I don't want to put too much on them to require a car. You know. But I would definitely take always in consideration um, their transportation, um, lack of or whatever. Some kind of way we'll figure it out. Yeah. And if it's like a live-in case where they're going to be there for days at a time, it's usually really easy. You know, they can just get dropped off. And even we even will drop them off and pick them up. If it's like a live-in case, if it's not like we're not going to do it like a shift, like drop you off in the morning, pick you up. But oh, gotcha. if, if if it's a living case, we'll come pick you up, get your bags, um, 
take you to the take you to the family's house where you're gonna be staying, help you get settled in, you know, all your stuff together, get your stuff in the house and with the family and all that. And mm-hmm. yeah, so that's not an issue at all. We all, you know, we we we're very open with that. So um, you and like you said, you gotta accommodate the best you can, mm-hmm. you know, and people appreciate that. The families appreciate it. Um, so, but yeah, that's it. So the um, so what you will be can, what so one of the first things after your caregiver, the most important role is the community liaison, and that's what we're basically talking about. Um, okay. Eventually, you'll get to the place where. You can hire your community liaison out and they'll be doing this stuff. But in the beginning, you're the community liaison right. on your own business. So it takes strong networking, presentation and follow up skills, excellent communication and listening skills, self-confidence, enthusiasm, strong initiative and motivation and a desire to succeed, ability to work independently and handle multiple multiple tasks concurrently. Ideal candidate to have hospital and or home care experience. And then we get to that marketing and sales experience is highly preferred. So this is like what you're looking for in a person that's going to be a community liaison. But like I said, when you're in the beginning, that's going to be you. Right. Uh-huh. So um, and when you think about this, this position, I always think about it as like a care, like a super caregiver, somebody who's a caregiver. But they just want more and they're they're smart. They're, you know, they got good energy. They want they outgoing. These are the people that you can hire from within. You don't have to necessarily go get this person with all this sales experience, with all this marketing experience. If they have, like, like I said, they could be trained to have like, you know, um, certain things, but they gotta have a great attitude, they gotta have a lot of confidence in themselves. They got to be able to take the initiative and, and multitask and stuff like that as they're out in the community with all these different um, pieces of literature, all these brochures and folders and files and keeping everybody's information. You know, I mean, everything is digitized now. They can have a tablet and re- do it really easily. But finding a caregiver. So if you start your company and you're doing this in the beginning, th- six, six, you know, three, six, 12 months, you you got a caregiver who's really good. Um, she's always on time. She may have transportation. This might be a candidate for your community liaison position, you know, I and see. it doesn't have to be like a full-time position because, you know, you're going to have to pay them a little bit more. So they can do shifts and, you know, they can do like part-time community liaison. So they can have an opportunity to work, you know, work both positions and make more money and they'll okay. be helping you out. So don't necessarily feel like you got to go find this person out in the world like a specific, because if you just go on Indeed right now and put community liaison for, it's going to be, it's going to be like 50,000, 30,000, you know, it's going to be, an excuse. people going to be wanting a lot of money for that particular position. I got so, you. You see what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's a high, highly sought after position and um, it's pretty, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot to it. So um, these are some of the things that will go in your marketing folder outside of like your brochures and stuff like that. Um, so like some of your, so like you can have like your, um, like your company documentation, like an admission statement. You can have like some references on your office letterhead, like on your business letterhead. You can have some agreements. So like if you go into assisted living and all this stuff is in the business in the box. You can go okay. to the, uh, you got the business box. Yeah, I sent it Yes, I did. Uh-huh. So you'll have like your agreement. So like they have the assisted living agreement. It's not a binding contract or anything like mm-hmm. that. Like they can hire up whoever they want, but that'll be the agreement with you. So you can show them that. If you go into different places, you could just show them what the contracts will look like. And then they'll have it to look over. Because you might can't get <laughs> all of that. Say like, okay, we can, you know, we have some, we, we'll, we'll take your folder. And then you can follow up back with them. Hey, did you get a chance to check out the folder? List of services, like I said, the newsletter, brochure, cards. Um, and then, I, and then again, marketing and sales experience is highly preferred. You know, any when you start engaging people with your marketing folder, but the folder is usually what you're what you have with you in the community. So you have a okay. stack of folders, and you got these five locations, twenty five. Or if you're going to do 
25 a week, you're going to say, I'm going to hit five places each day and I'm going to have these five folders. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going home until I get these folders to people who can possibly help me. You see what I mean? Okay. So, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so if you got any questions, just stop. Stop. Me. Okay, I will. I will. But I'm good so far. So <clears throat> this is like the um, the roadmap for your community liaison. And like I said, it's going to be you. So this is like your roadmap in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the visit, revisit, inform and educate between 25 and 30 network referral sources on a weekly schedule. Um, visit, that's the initial visit. Revisit, that's the follow-up. Inform and educate. Um, a lot of times people don't really understand what home care businesses do, you know, home care services do. And that goes for especially like families. And that's your job to like inform them what you do and to educate them about how your company works and some of the values that you have and um, some of the principles and, and you know, you know, your value system. Like, again, like every company is different. Like some mm -hmm. companies might, their value might be on um, <clears throat> having the most, you know, the, 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 the cheapest rates. And, you know, that's something that they kind of lean into. What we like to lean into is let's start having like really consistent caregivers. Like you're always gonna, we do our best to make sure you're gonna get the same caregiver every time because mm -hmm. of, you know, in these bigger markets, um, with with, with um some of these companies like Bright Star, they they they'll send a different caregiver every every day. They don't care, and uh, if the family don't like it, they don't like it. They and they because they got so many clients, they don't care. Mm -hmm. So um. <clears throat> So, you know, that's kind of like what you're kind of expressing to them and, you know, letting them know your values and stuff like that. So to conduct, conduct, conduct a minimum of two educational presentations, info sessions to a group each month to raise awareness. So that can be like you can um, set up, set up a meeting or a, um, a session with whether that's an individual or, you know, somebody at a, at a smaller company or you might set up a, um, a like a small seminar at a facility and you can, you know, bring your information in. You can have some handouts. You might talk about diabetic, you know, you know, you know, diet and health or oh, you know, okay. fall, fall prevention. You see what I'm saying? So like yeah. but it's, the world is yours with this. You can take it anywhere you want with it. You can have some fun stuff. You can have, you know, anything, but you want to, you know, create these presentations to go out into the community and, and, and share with these different facilities. And a lot of times, if they if you be like, look, we want to come in and, or, you know, my company want to come in and, you know, do this presentation, you know, do you think we can get a group of, uh, you know, some of the uh, people who are, some of the residents to come? And I mean, they're not doing nothing anyway. Most of the time they're like, sure, we don't, you know, that give us a break. You know, they yeah. sit there and listen to y'all for 30, 40 minutes mm -hmm. or an hour, you know. So um, it's not usually hard to get those, um, set up those sessions to get those groups. Okay. Yeah. That's Especially if you bring in some good content. Like like I said, mm -hmm. like you might be talking about Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. And just all you got to do is go go on. Um, now you used to used to would just go search it on Google. But now me, I go on ChatGBT to AI. I really? Put, oh my goodness. I get so much stuff off of there. I will put in there, write me a pre 